one. Hey, everybody! Nice to have you with us. Uh, welcome to the TGS game stream for Vault Peddlers. Corey and I are uh, in the middle of completely revamping the core mechanics of our game. But first, we are talking about uh, aliens, Bill Paxton, face acting, and um, and uh, game prep, which just are a fluid conversation for <laughs> for both of us. It's a good scene. It's a great scene. Everybody, look up the scene, w the the knife scene from Aliens, where it's Bill Paxton, and like the android Bishop. is like holding, holding. Yeah, Bishop is like holding his hand down. Yeah. It's a, it's Game a, over, man. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Bill Paxton rules as Hudson. That's a cool movie. Hell yeah. Um, um, fuck. Yeah, but no, um, sorry. Just to continue, um, what, uh, what, what are you... I mean, like, for the game tomorrow, it's literally just... Is, is it more prep, or are we actually starting? I forget where we left off. Huh? Um, I don't have to prep anything. You guys didn't get to the content I had prep. Um, yeah. So, and then you guys said that you were going to where I did prep content, and I was like, woo. <laughs> <coughs> 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 How it do, would it be? <laughs> How it do, would it be? Um, yeah, that's correct. We just put Heelys on everything in this game. Yeah, um, everything in this game is Heelys. I was also going to say, like, just because it's going to take a couple seconds before we get into the game in earnest. Um, yeah. I've been reading um, the John Hick. I started reading the John Hickman uh, run of X-Men that came out in 2019. Started with a mini series, two mini series, House of X and Powers of X. Yeah. That, like, are, is revamping the wheel of X-Men. And it is fucking awesome. It's fucking insane. It's, like... It's psychedelic, futuristic, out of control, playing around with, like, different timelines. It, it's fucking weird and, like, awesome in all the coolest ways. And it made me fall in love with X-Men again. And, you know, that's all. I have not read a comic book in years, and I say that with a great deal of shame. Whoa, are we talking about soap shoes? Over Hell here? yeah, we're talking about soaps. Babicious or Babicus or, or what, however you say the name. Babicus? Babicus? I like Babicus. Um, was like, yeah, Bobbicus? skate shoes that you slide on rails and curbs. And I like, I ate shit wearing a pair of soaps. I'll never forget. Because I just thought you could like take them and then just like do whatever on... Um, on like Whatever. any well on any surface and like it didn't have to be waxed it didn't have to be prepped or anything so i was like running up and i like jumped on the side and that shit just caught the soaps and i fell like face first into the rest of that curb it was awful but they're anyways cool. yeah they're rad they're fucking cool <laughs> so i'm gonna get you a pair of soaps for christmas please do i would love that if you buy me if you get me a pair of soaps i will uh I'll do a special stream where I go around my neighborhood trying to grind on shit. I'll get you and your partner soaps. I'll be like this. <laughs> some, some his and some his and hers soaps. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's a fucking cool wedding gift. Honestly. That's honestly, that's sick. As, that's rad as hell. It's like, hey. Get you both roller skates. Everybody, <laughs> everybody no, in the blades. wedding, everybody in the wedding party has soaps and we all grind. <laughs> we all grind down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> Radical Normally as hell. Not everyone's gonna be walking down the aisle. They are at my wedding. Oh, they are at our wedding. If you don't All have right, soaps, cool. you can't come. <laughs> grandma. <Soaps only. laughs> Sorry, grandma. Sorry, grandma, with your lame ass. <laughs> can't even grind. Okay, so let's. Do we have Nick today? Um, I don't see him. Yeah, He's abandoned we're... us. Well, Nick usually tunes in around seven because that was our That's old true. that was our old start time. So we may see him in a little bit. That's true, and um, we and he was at Gen Con. So oh, that's also true. Yeah. So who knows? He may be burned out today. Oh, nice social political game rules. Fuck like yeah! We've I actually have been playing. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, Taylor's been running L5R. Um, so. I was just going to say. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, I didn't... I used to think that that kind of stuff was, like, best left to being, like, a rules light kind of thing. But, like, mm -hmm. 
after playing L5R, where it has these really intensive rules for like how to run like intrigue scenes and all that, I'm super down with like mechanizing that stuff. It's very cool. It's a very cool way to do that. <clears throat> that being said, let's chat about what we talked about last time. So we're going to be rounding out combat. Uh, yeah. This session. Um, I did want to talk about one thing before we get started in earnest. Um, yeah. We had talked about, uh, I presented uh, something for movement. Um, yeah. And, and then I presented a little bit of confusion. There was a little bit of confusion between us, and we ended up just going on. So okay. what I was saying was the rules as I presented them for movement doesn't work because it relies on a cumulative roll of dice, which we no longer use cumulative rolls. Um, we use hits on successes on ones and twos or over half. Um, yeah. so, so I actually had a different idea that would interact with um, uh, the GM facing tool sets that we have, like the cat sheets. Oh, okay. I see what you're talking about here. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So I was thinking of like, <clears throat> of on the cat sheet, having, because we're already prioritizing movement as squad based and it is more like how you can move about in the area, how much you can move is based on like, I mean, every we have a lot of things based on like tactical knowledge. Even uh, traversal is like, though it is physical, it's also like tactical. Um, right. So I was thinking of taking that a step further and just having like three different levels on the cat sheet for knowledge for factions. And like, if you don't know the area, basically every vault peddler in your group gets uh, to add three to the total movement that you can split up. If you do anything that makes you know the area more, you add another check mark on the cat sheet and it increases it to five, yada, yada. That way we could um, also add items that would increase movement, add like knowledge rolls that would increase movement, uh, feats or any kind of thing we wanted to do. Um, so basically the idea is like core, like every vault peddler adds five to the, like four or five to the, um, let's just say five. Every vault okay. peddler adds five to the pool. And then you can disperse that uh, as, as you see fit. And then you could find a way to gamify it by learning the area, which the GM could keep track of on their cat sheet, uh, which could increase that. Um, and notably, this would also, like, work the same for, um, like, factions, right? If you have factions with, like, four people, then they also get, you know, 20 movement that they could split up between everyone. Um, so that was my kind of concept. I think it streamlines things a little bit. There's no okay. dice rolls involved. Yeah, definitely no dice rolls involved. I think I'm kind of past the point where I want people to roll for movement unless it's, like, yeah. through some kind of contested area. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, um, basically the idea is that every, uh, uh, round starts with every vault peddler having five hexes that they add into a combined pool. That pool can be taken from however the players want. If one player wants to move, you know, 15 hexes and the other players don't want to move at all, that's totally fine. And yeah. then it's for basically additional knowledge of the area. Are we adding one hex per player? Are we adding one hex total? How how are you thinking? <laughs> um, I would I would say like stock. If we were doing it on the um, if we we're doing it on the cat sheet, it would be one per like uh, member of your faction. Um, which additionally, like if you were running with like some NPC going with you, that would also get counted, right? Like yeah. Um, so okay. yeah, that's how I do it. Uh, what like plus one for each like successful knowledge roll up to a limit of like, you know, three, and then we can have items that could increase it, magic that can increase it, that kind of thing. Um, gotcha. No, that works. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I honestly I don't know if that was actually brought up during stream last week. I didn't even catch it um, that that was even an issue. I totally get why it is a problem with the old system. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's like a very simple, elegant solution to it. Um, like what I noticed from like our recent playtest was just that like players, uh, players were really hesitant to do a lot of movement based stuff because we had so many roles involved. So yeah. my honest take on it is give them some role or give them some free movement and 
I think just kind of make the adjustment from mm. there. Like that, that just well, seems very straightforward to me. And like, let's take a look at, cause we're doing da, da, uh, momentum and spirals, combat resolution, combat is resolved as shootouts, offense versus defense. The attacker rolls their approach chosen during the initiative pass and a skill determined by the archivist uh, and player narr narration against the defender's chosen defense, parry, dodge, etc. Let's mm -hmm. actually make those today. Um, make uh, those? Yeah, like uh, what what the chosen defense paths you can be are. like. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, da, 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 da. if the attacker has more successes, the defender loses a node. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, because we're getting rid of, like, the pass-through movement, then pass-through armor thing, um, yeah, armor is going to, like, add maybe one, two rolls and things like that. Instead exactly. Of, uh, so we can remove that from the character sheet. Armor's really not going to be on there. Um, nor is movement, because movement will be a joint thing. Yeah. Um, which means we can get rid of, um, I, I mean, like, we could probably strip down our contested movement thing, right? Because... We definitely can. Yeah, like, al almost to the point of removing it. I think if you're... Actually, I think we can remove it, because if you're going to bowl over somebody... It's that's a, shootout. a shootout. Yeah. Right. Um... The only thing we'd have to talk about is potentially, like, attacks of opportunity kind of shit. Um, well, you kind of have that mentioned up here in, um, it's in, like, the initiative thing. Like, group conditions may affect roles or results. Um, sure, yeah. So, like, that, I, that is kind of mentioned. It seems like as we're leaving it now, it's really just kind of per GM fiat sort of thing. Well, and let's let's write these conditions out tonight because we could have like the prepared condition, and I think then yeah. you would get attacks of opportunity, right? And like, I've, if, if your group, and I've actually spent some time this week getting a head start on some of those conditions, so we cool. we definitely can do that. Um, uh, the, the other thing I wanted to touch on this time was like we were talking a lot about like uh, injuries and shit. Yeah, um, we're like bringing into this. Uh, uh, this wound system. Um, so that being said, you mentioned like wanting to create a framework for wounds, so we wouldn't have to like generate a bunch of hyper specific ones. Yeah, I think I think we could probably do both. Like give examples of what they could do, but I really like the idea of like having a framework in which uh, GMs could do it. So let's develop those today too. <laughs> So yeah, um, I, I have an idea for that as well. Uh, I've spent okay, some time cool. on that this week too. Okay, cool. I, I didn't prepare anything this time. So. <laughs> I, I did all the homework, y'all. So this is going to be so. a shit show. Um, okay, cool. Well then, yeah, let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, what I've got uh, going. Can, we, can yeah? we strip a couple things out? Um, yeah, what do you have in right mind? Uh, let's strip out combat actions and let's strip out um um the movement stuff right we don't need either sure uh, yeah. and you mean literally strip out like go into the old thing and just remove those sections <laughs> yeah we don't need them yeah sounds good all right so com and we uh, have this saved as an older version right we we do yeah we can go into the version history of this and we can handle it however we want um okay this so is our favorite thing as game developers <laughs> Destroying uh, things. Okay, so damage resolution, combat moves, and then the phases are kind of out as well. So I'm gonna yeah. gonna take those. Okay, so health and dying. Are we are we still doing like being rendered inert? Is that is that gonna be a thing, or are we just not touching that right now? I mean, I think we actually can because like now we have much more limited the amount of petty coin that you have on you. It is also much more valuable. Yeah. Um. So like. It is at most going to give you like what a plus ten on a roll, which is like cool, almost yeah. guaranteed. Uh, well, actually, no, we can't because it's it's not cumulative rolls anymore. It's just successes, right? Uh, correct. Yes. So maybe it they add just... maybe they add additional dice. Yeah, add die to your pool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. one sec. Uh, burn petty coin, make final action. Number of petty coin adds to the total number die of pool. dice. Oh yeah. 
um, adds to the total die pool of their final roll. And that petty coin is rendered inert and unusable. Cool. So that's done. Cool. All right. Sick. Um, and we'll... Uh, it's going to be a little bit of just kind of busy work getting the new stuff moved into the old sections. I'm not going to bore readers with that. Um, but I think that that is a start getting that stuff moved out. Let's talk a little bit about conditions. Um, so, uh, what I have here are just some very basic, like here's like some of the standard things that I think you're going to come across in basically any, TTRPG no matter what like you have somebody who's like bleeding or like otherwise hurt blinded deaf disoriented held intoxicated poisoned unconscious winded the whole idea behind all of these um, is that I want them to be very simple and snappy and easy to pick up Um, you've done such a great job at sort of revisiting the core mechanics of this and making the system a lot more streamlined and I wanted to kind of hold to that as much as I possibly could. Sure. Um, mm. So we can do this a couple of ways. Like we can go through these and we can see what you think of each of them. We can look at the general list and see what you think is missing. I know you mentioned like prepared uh, so, earlier. Yeah. Like I, 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 well, and I don't know if this is a conver- like this is a conversation we need to have about like individual conditions and joint conditions, squad based conditions. Cause yeah. like, I see prepared as like a squad condition. Definitely. Right? Like we are, see that. we are a prepared group. And now like we'll get attacks of opportunities that everyone walks, everyone walking by a hex will, you know, get, uh, or right. like a, a plus two, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, surprised would definitely, I think, fall under a group condition. So the question is, do we want to split up conditions so that we have group and individual conditions or throw everything under one and say that these can be group or individual conditions depending on narrative. Like, leave that to GM Fiat. So, this is this is where we get into maybe the more frustrating aspect of trying to design this as a book. Because, Corey, you and I have both been struggling a lot with, like, the manuals and, like, the layouts for them in our systems. Yeah. My initial intention with this was let's dump every condition in here um, and we'll just we'll do it alphabetically, whatever. And yeah. then in other sections, like when we talk about wounds, right? We have like level one wounds or whatever, and we just list literally just list the name of those conditions. And then we like refer them to this other section that has all of them in it. And there's a simplicity in that I like, but it also means that you're going to have to. Which you don't want to do. Right, exactly. You're going to have people that are like filling through. Do we. Okay, there we go. Sorry. My mic Um, is being weird. Um, It's been a while since I've had the held condition. Please, God, hold me. <laughs> right, we should probably call that grapple because that's what everyone's going to ask about. It's, it's, been, uh, a, it's been a long time since I've held the, since I've had the loved condition. <laughs> I, loved, I was just about to say love. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, God damn it, I need the health condition. I need someone, held, someone held me right now. Please, God, please. I just need to be loved. Um, so here's the thing, um, (laughs) fuck, you know what might be fun for grapple (laughs) is like fucking movement vampirism, basically. You get to add, (laughs) I guess it doesn't make any sense, but I like the idea of movement vampirism in something. What what, What do you mean? Being able to steal movement from another faction would be a fun thing to be able to do. <laughs> that be, that that sounds like a special ability. I wonder yeah. if I wonder oh. if there's something you could do with like a province role for that. Yeah, that would I like uh, maybe a pharaoh because like pharaohs are good at tactical decisions, right? Yeah, so, like, be, being able to like suss out what's going on on the field and like use outmaneuver their somebody. Again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Keep a keep a pin in that. I really like that a lot. Um, um, so let, let, yeah, let's talk. I mean, like, here's the thing: we could introduce the wound condition, uh, the the wound framework, um, and then put conditions underneath it. But here, it's 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 not going to track one in one, right? Like, um, 
because there's going to be positive conditions too. There's going to be uh, conditions that are based on geography, conditions that are uh, just won't apply to the movement system. So I wonder if we could take, um, man, we could take like uh, the framework for wounds like you were saying, like having them ramp up to the different degrees of danger that you can have with wounds. Yeah. Um, or introduce new ones, yada. Um, and we could take, like, the individual conditions, like bleeding, um, uh, like broken or something like that, and put them under the wound section and then make conditions more robust because that because we know that, like, Things like bleeding will be applied by being wounded, right? Like, right. So th those are the only way they'll be applied. Um, so if we, from a book perspective, if we break those up and keep like the individual damaging conditions under wounds, then I don't think it's it, like it, looking through a book, I won't be disturbed by that, right? Like, I'll be like, oh, you're wounded, I opened the wound section. Oh, you... And, like, we could keep those sections close to each other in the book, I think. Right. Well, I mean, we don't we don't need to, is the thing, right? We, we can do that. I don't think it would hurt to have a section in the back of the book that actually has all of the conditions just alphabetically listed. Sure, 100%. But, but yeah, the more I think about it, the less that works as, like, a GM tool, which ultimately... That's kind of what our book is meant to be, right? Like that's that's why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so, so yeah. In that case, let's let's look at like the conditions that could that could just be only garnered by wounding you. Yeah. Um, so tell you what, head up to go to wound system on the heading. How. Okay, I did it. And I I just I copied and pasted those conditions okay. in here, and we can just delete whatever we think doesn't count as like a, a wound. Okay. Uh, the ones that could only be caused by wounds, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Cause blinded could be situational, right? It doesn't Absolutely. have to be a wound. Like, it could be your eyes get gouged, but in that case, like we would have something like, you know, you can apply the blank condition, yada, yada. Um, or, or like a something in the beginning, like, hey, feel free to apply conditions as they are narratively fit uh, to wounds. Yeah. Okay, cool. So bleeding definitely stays. Okay. Um, I think, man, like, it's really tough here because a lot of these are technically combat. Like, intoxicated or poisoned, that is theoretically like a, a combat web, but like, it, it's also very situational. Um, yeah. Fuck, man, it's, 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 it is the case that organizing this book is going to be the biggest killer. Organizing ever. it, it always is. I mean, and anybody who has GM'd for more than like six months, like who's like played through a couple different systems or whatever, will tell you that like, it's the bane of basically every tabletop game that like organizing the book fucking sucks it's like one of the hardest things you have to try and do. Uh, and very few people, if any, actually get it right. I, I can only so, think of a couple books that I didn't have too many problems with. So we could like, just, like we're already using tags, right? Yeah. We could put tags on conditions as we list them and like list injury on them so that like, you can take, like, you set up the framework for what, because you were talking about having a framework on how wounds can degrade, right? Or uh, get more dangerous. Yep. Um, so we, like, create that formula, and then for each, um, for each uh, condition, we could put tags on them, like group or uh, wound, uh, or wound or injury or whatever. That way, in, when we get to the wound section, you can be like, if they fail a roll or lose a wound point, you apply a level one condi uh, level one condition with the injury tag. And then uh, like right there underneath that, like we were saying, we have the uh, conditions table right next to it um, with right. all of the different things with all the tags on them. That might be a way to do it. 
Okay. I mean, that would definitely be an option. So like, let me, let me actually show you kind of the framework that I had for these sort of things, right? Is yeah. like, uh, if you're looking at this table, basically you would have like level one wounds and like, just for argument's sake, we'll put like bleeding, disoriented, um, I don't know, blinded, whatever. Um, <laughs> held. Held. <laughs> <laughs> Love hurts, guys. Um, right. And so over on this side, like you would have like the actual description of like what that thing is. You'd have it for all of these. And then you would, the table would basically just go down to like level two wounds. And like those would be like a more serious thing. Right. And so we have, I don't know, broken limb. Um, we have, uh, I don't know, internal organ failure uh we have um i'm trying to think like blacking out or something like that um and so you would basically the idea that i'm thinking of is you have like this list of all of these different things and their descriptions and what happens is um one of the players gets like their first wound or whatever uh yeah. And whereas a lot of games would have you like, you know, randomly roll a dice or something like that um, to determine like what the actual injury itself is. Basically, it would just say, OK, you have a level one wound. I'm a GM. So I go to this table. I look at level one wounds and I say, you know, what makes sense for him right now is that he's disoriented. And so I say, OK, like I narrate like how this actually works. We apply the disoriented condition to that character and then. The, and then the gameplay can continue like that. That seems like the sleekest way to do this for me. So, I, I, I mean, I would I would even go one step further than that and, and just have just have a framework for wounds, like a, an out like a an equation for wounds that makes them more effective when you take on another wound. So, like, okay. we don't even have to like, let's look at one of your wounds. Um, yeah, yeah. Characters with a bleeding condition suffer uh, an additional damage node for any. Uh, oh, so okay, that bleeding's brutal. Uh, yeah, bleeding. I I made true. bleeding to be pretty brutal. Yeah. In in true in true L five R fashion, I I wanted that one to be bad. Uh, uh, well, so look look at this. Uh, targets uh, cannot hear anything said to this. Someone using the obfuscation approach against a deaf target rolls uh, a plus one die. That would be a level one deafened. Uh, level two deafened would be take plus oh, two die. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So this way we don't have to like we don't huh. have to dictate like what is what, right? Like everything just goes up or down by one depending. Sure. We just have that equation in the beginning. And then we can put like tags next to uh, conditions. Be like, if if it says group, then this can be applied to the group. Um, yeah. And you know, if it has uh, if it has injury, these conditions can be applied by injury. Uh, yeah. If it if it has individual, these conditions can be applied to individuals. And like, you could have multiple tags on different conditions, right? Like, because everybody could be dazed from something. So that could be a group condition or an individual condition. Sure. Um, okay, I, I cool. do think we sh should maybe look at bleeding because if no. you get... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be the worst one. For each condition, we need to have a uh, condition resolution too, right? Like, how do you get rid of or when does this dissipate? Um, okay. Um, so let's let's um, so let's add one more column here to the right. We're gonna make that into resolution. Although now that I'm saying this, it should probably be back under the condition system, and then we should uh, bring wounds right next to it with the. Um, well, if we're if we're doing uh, all different, if we're just doing conditions in one table, like originally positive. Oh, like, yeah, then I guess it would make sense that we aren't. Okay, yeah, yeah. hang on one sec. I'm going to move this down. Believe it or not, I'm actually thinking, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> organizationally now. Okay. So I'll bring that down. I'm going to come back up here, get rid of these guys, since we're not putting them in this section anymore. 
Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to take us on that detour. No, no, you're good. Um, okay. So let's start, let's start with square one here. Let's start with bleeding. So we have the name, we have uh, the description for how it works. Tags would be wound. Individual. Oh, okay. Right, that'd be one tag. Uh, injury, or should we just call it wound? A wound, yeah. Keep it yeah. consistent throughout the book. That's that's yeah. the other big lesson we've learned. Uh, individual wound. Um, I don't think like everyone in a group can be bleeding, but I don't think that you can like. It, bleeding isn't inherently a um, group condition, right? Unless they got hit by a bomb, <laughs> it, it certainly can be. <laughs> right, but I think you'd resolve that individually, not like, um, I don't know, ble- bleeding feels like very personal. Yeah. <laughs> my blood is mine. <laughs> Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Um, you, you know what might be... Um, there we go. Disoriented. Uh, so their movement limited five hexes. Is alive but cannot perform an action. Uh, when the target is uh, uh, okay, uh, so let's just get down what we have. Let's actually get everything we have in there right now. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, <sighs> all right, so we got blinded. Uh, it's there. Got deaf. I'm I'm worried about bleeding because because we have three stock. Um, like you can't ramp bleeding up anymore, right? Like it is already at a three. Because if I take because there's only three wound nodes that you have stock without like items or anything. Um if you take an additional wound node, like I took a wound that gave me bleeding. Uh, and if I take an additional wound node for my next one, that just kills me. So we can't ramp it up, right? No, that's not true. You said that each wound has three nodes. Oh, I see. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, that makes sense then. Never mind. Yeah, I mean, it's still brutal. It's not that bad. <laughs> it, it makes it better though I was thinking like boom. each one is like a single wound yeah <laughs> yeah that would be that would be rough um I was like I, I was mathing it out in my head I was like okay what happened <laughs> okay uh, we should call we should call the held grapple because that is going to be what people are going to expect to see okay cool I just didn't know if we wanted to it was like that whole grappling with D&D language night. Yeah. Yeah, I opted for something different, but if you think that that works better, we'll go with it. But I think we should introduce held as a different sort of a different sort of condition. <laughs> do, do you? Yeah. Cool. If you if you're feeling loved, then <laughs> you are <laughs> You heal all your wounds. <laughs> But I'm sorry, what happens with this condition? You smile. That's what happens. <laughs> what's what's the condition where somebody pats me on the head and tells me I'm enough? Uh, uh, uh okay. <laughs> Rappling. Uh, let's see here. Okay, and then winded. That's going to be our last one so far. Um, also, just as a note, in case you want to put stuff on here. Um, just try and put it in alphabetical order just for just for my I poor won't. organizational stick. I won't try. Cool, thank you. <laughs> I, I knew you wouldn't, but I just wanted to put it out there. I found a real easy way for me not to fuck it up. <laughs> uh, okay, individual wounded. Uh, I think blinded and deafened can both be grouped, like flashbang go off, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that can definitely be group. Thousand percent. Okay. Group. Uh, group or individual, group. right? It can happen yeah. to either. 
And I think they can both be uh, wound, too. Definitely wound, for sure. There's going to be I plenty. I my fingers in your ear. <laughs> that a wound. I gave you a wet willy, and now you are one step away from dying. <laughs> I mean, if you jam them in, yeah. <laughs> I don't get why everyone's so angry about it. I just gave him a wet willy. You pierced his eardrum. <laughs> Ever. He said he felt you in his brain. <laughs> Do you think you could sneeze so hard that a piece of your brain came out? Is that just a thing you're asking me? Yeah. That's a wow. Uh, <laughs> no, dog, I don't. I don't think that can happen. <laughs> really Damn. fucking hope not. And what's that thing that came out of my head? <laughs> Corey. <laughs> That was raw hamburger that you tried to put up your nose. Do you remember when I told you, don't put the raw hamburger up your nose? No. That, that's the reason why. <laughs> uh, individual wound unconscious. Individual wound. Uh, winded individual wound, I think. Um, so let's get prepared in there. Okay. Uh, and prepared can be you get uh, an attack of opportunity for everyone who passes by an adjacent hex. Okay. So prepared targets get an attack of opportunity um, for every target that passes by an adjacent hex. Okay, so follow up question here. Sure. In a game where every attack is shootouts, what does an attack of opportunity even look like? Does it just mean that if they win, they don't harm you? Or what? how, how does that actually work? Just, just that even if it's not on your turn, if somebody walks by your hex, yeah. you get to do an attack on them. Just an okay. offensive roll against them. Okay. But they would be defending, correct? As, as sure, per the yeah. shootout rules. As per the shootout, they would still defend. Okay, and if they win, do they do they inflict damage on you? I mean, this just sounds like a potential opportunity for them to harm you. Sure, it's a potential opportunity. It depends on how they're uh, like how they're blocking, defending. Uh, again, we're gonna have to create that list. Like, you yeah. can succeed on a defense, and like, I think even if like somebody takes an attack of opportunity against you and you try to disarm them because that like you can still do that, right? Like, yeah. Okay, I, I think, fair like, enough. Because you 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 still parry, right? Like, well, and so this is this is actually another conversation we need to have because I don't know if we need defense actions. I think it's literally just like if somebody comes at me and tries to attack me, I just narrate what I'm going to try and do and then roll, right? So I I, I don't think that can work because I, I I think we have to tie it to approaches because if we do it that way, every defense is now an offensive roll. Yeah. Um. It, 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 that's just going to fuck with our action economy super, super hard. Um, okay. I, I feel like if we if we trap players into defensive actions based on their approaches, that way you have to take like one of these maneuvers to defend yourself because you're using this approach. You're approaching things in a clockwork fashion. You're approaching things in a uh, in, in a uh, ferocity fashion. Ferocity, yeah, for sure. You can counterattack. Yeah. Um, but it, if we do it the other way, it is going to make combat very samey, and it is going to just have everybody trying to defend as much as possible yeah. instead of, like, potentially trying to move out of harm's way, yada yada. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense, I guess. Um, all right, cool. So uh, we got prepared. What else do you think we should have on here? Uh, surprised. Um, okay. You take a minus two, uh, you remove two die from your die, or remove a die from your dice pool, uh, or two die from your dice pool, uh, for defensive actions. Okay. Okay. Um. Actually, could we do two die if, like, what if they're only rolling one die? Um, that's a good point. Let's just do one die. Um, 
and then like if it removes all your die, you don't get to defend, right? Like okay. that's you were too surprised. <laughs> Uh, if this condition removes all die, then the defending player cannot defend. That's rough. Yeah, brutal. But it also encourages you to learn the area you're in. It learn like um, yeah. So if I if I'm if I know that I only have like a one in you know clockwork or something like that. Um, well, let me ask you this. Uh, well, I guess it actually, we don't, wouldn't even need to put that in, right? Because, I mean, there's nothing in here that dictates that the defender has to use a specific approach. So even if I have a one in ferocity, I just, like, my natural thing is like, okay, well, obviously I'm not going to use ferocity here. I'm going to use, you know, holistics well, or something like how, that. How it works is if we go back to uh, combat, the beginning of combat, initiative and movement. Yeah. Um, da -da. So, you declare an approach, basically. We're stealing that from fucking L5R. A thousand percent. Um, yeah. Um, and, sorry, we're, we're also making a modular system, and it's a good idea. <laughs> um, so, you have to, whatever you're doing, whatever skill that you're rolling, has to be with that approach. And then why you won't stay in that approach is using approaches two times in a row, three times in a row, degrades the approach, uh, the amount of die, uh, your die level in it. Right. So I, I think it's self-resolving is basically. Well, well, the... That's kind of my point is that none, none of what you just said indicates that I have to use my, one of my only approaches that has like a single die in it. No, right? no, but like it, you're trapped in that approach even through the uh, round of the like the attackers, right? Like if the next faction's going and you on your turn were in the clockwork approach, yeah, um, you're still you in the clockwork have, approach. Yeah, you're still in the clockwork approach. So actually, I, I I feel like we are talking right past each other. Everything you're saying, I just feel like it's. Like, even if I'm still trapped in the clockwork approach, the point is I chose the clockwork approach at the beginning of the fucking thing, right? Yeah. So if that's the case, why would I choose the clockwork approach if I only have a one in clockwork when I know that the surprised condition will remove my one die? I wouldn't choose um, clockwork. I would choose holistics or I would choose ferocity or whatever. So that's not even a danger, right? I mean, there are definitely going to be situations when you're, like, trying to approach things, right? Like, where, like, I need to use my fire ring for some reason. I need to use my water ring for some reason. Like, my, my best approach is degraded. So I'm, I chose my weakest approach. How long do you keep the surprise condition? Do you keep it for the entire combat? No, I mean, it would just be that round. Like that's how, well, actually we haven't talked resolution. We, we um, haven't, but, but I mean yeah. that, but so that's the thing is it, it only degrades if I use the same thing multiple times and it's not something like I'm trying to do these actions with a specific intent because literally somebody jumped out from the shadows and surprised me. And at that point they were like, choose an approach. Naturally, I'm not going to go with the approach that I have a one in. Night father. Let me too. Uh, no, no, but like, okay, like, let, let, let me put forward this. Like, you're in the middle of combat. You're fighting a dragon. Yeah. Uh, you think that you are just fighting a dragon. And in the middle of combat, like, as a combat thing the dragon can do, fucking a bunch of drakes come out of the walls. They immediately give the party the surprise condition. You're already in your lowest, uh, in your lowest approach, just from the combat that was occurring before. And there it is. Yeah. Okay. That that makes sense. It's situational, right? Like Well, cuz I was I was thinking about surprise being just at like the beginning of combat. But right. definitely yeah, if it's something that can be applied during, that's a different situation. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, cool. sorry for derailing things for like no, 10 no, no. minutes. No, I mean it's important that we understand each other, right? Like yeah. um actually I do want to take a quick look at resolution uh for all of sure these, yeah. Uh, no, I just want to take a quick look at basic resolution 
which is oh. under not under combat rework. Where is basic resolution? Is that up in the gully works here? Are you talking about basic resolution for like just die? Yeah, just for die. Uh, yeah. So uh, just if the basic rolls. Yep. Um, I mean, I don't know if any of this still applies, though. What are you looking for? Oh, I was looking for the new rules. We haven't put those in yet. No, 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 no. Those haven't been moved up yet. I am. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm removing stuff, but I'm not replacing it just yet. Okay. Um. So, where's yeah. our new? Where's our new rule for basic risk? Yeah, hang on one sec here. It's uh, it's under the live notes section. Um, ah. Okay, that, that's that's why. I was yeah. Like, where am I? That's because I organized. <laughs> <laughs> you got so used to my headers. Not anymore. I did. I did use your headers for the next section. For the though. next section. You did very well. Very proud uh, of you. Um, um, I just wanted to make sure that um, uh, we calculate roles. Approaches are represented by polyhedral die. Skill ranks are um, skill ranks are the die pool. So yeah, even more on the surprise thing. If you're rolling a defense that requires a skill that you only have one in then sure it get react. okay so okay. just wanted to make sure yeah we that. we do need to keep that in mind actually so approaches yeah. would affect the polyhedral die type if it affects anything yeah. skills skills would affect the die pool correct okay cool um let me actually take a quick look through these then real quick so bleeding not relevant so must use adaptation for blinded um Ooh, oh, oh man, the idea of a uh, a condition that traps you in an approach for like a couple rounds, even like with the degrading levels of it. Yeah. Like that would be like that actually frightened. That might be a good one for frightened. Um, oh, OK. Well, that's actually what I have for blinded currently. Uh, oh. Yeah. Is uh, targets are unable to see must use adaptation as their approach until the blinded condition is removed. Uh, oh, we I can, was going to say. We could just apply it to frightened as well, and just say for sure. frightened, you you have to use whatever approach you're you're in currently, right? Like, Ooh, I like that. Yeah, because like it, it's harder to rework things if you're scared. Right, you're you're just kind of stuck in place. Okay, so frightened targets must use whatever approach they are currently using until resolved until the frightened condition is removed uh that's individual i don't think that's a wound one though right mm, it doesn't seem like it would see like yeah. this is this is the thing like if i had like a big scary piece of war gear or something like that i could totally see it as inflicting the frightened condition same thing with but, like maybe a really scary suit of armor or something like but that. I, I don't on know. On that point, I think like we were talking about like making uh, like items more robust on that level. Like then I think the items would have that like frightening tag on them, right? Yeah. Where it's like it, th then it doesn't have to be a wound thing. It's just like now the item is inherently frightening. Um, yeah. Yeah, but, that makes okay. sense. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um. All right, so frightened, I like that. Grappling. That should be grappled, just keeping it. Just I'm keeping it like, consistent with the rest of them. What? Look, look under unconscious. B bodied. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we keep that? <laughs> <laughs> people bodies. people are gonna know what it means can we put fold can we put folded <laughs> fucking folded son <laughs> <laughs> yeah we should like you, you know what would be a fun a fun thing to do <laughs> like as a design exercise what? make like a, a pbta game based on like um i, I think there are a couple of but it would just be fun to do based on like um, 
professional wrestling, which neither one of us know a ton of. Oh my god! Except yeah, for like what Griffin McElroy has told us about kayfabe. I I actually did watch a little bit of uh, pro wrestling in like high school and stuff. I've caught some, not 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 enough to say like I I watched it though. You know, yeah. Like, no, it was it was a weird thing. Like me and my little sister started watching it mainly just kind of like because it was funny and like we like started out being like oh like make fun of this whatever, and then like by the and then I was about to say and then like a, a, by like a month later we were like oh fuck Triple H that guy's an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Is it, isn't he from New Hampshire? Maybe I don't know. He, is. he was never my guy. I don't really want to say who my guy was because he ended up like murdering his family. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, Triple H was born and raised in Nashua, New Hampshire. Huh. All right. <laughs> Neat. So stay away from Triple H, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my guy was okay, from cool. my guy was from Georgia. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. So. Uh, we have prepared, surprise, unconscious. Um, so I just to be clear, we're not going with folded. <laughs> I I know you want to. No. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we're not going with folded, unfortunately. <laughs> Fine. Coward. Uh, you know what, Taylor? Let's go with held, actually. I think you're... Here's yeah? the thing. Well, because held can be applied... Um, for like vines and shit, right? Yeah, like totally. Your, yeah, webbing. Um, in that case, I think that also it could be a group one. I could see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Cool. We're going with held because we love you all. Um, held is back, man. Held Bobacus, is back. Held is back. held is in. Thanks, Bobacus. <laughs> <laughs> Bobacus. We love you, and we love... Man, Elder Dragoon is going to be like, what the fuck are you guys doing <laughs> right now? Right? I can already see the eye roll as he, like, logs onto our stream, and he's like, ah, oh, they're fucking doing it again. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go again. Um, okay, okay. cool. Um, Do we need more? We should probably get more. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think, like... You know broken. what? This is cheating, but hang on. What about broken? Broken kind of makes sense. Um, Get an injury. Oh, don't open up an L5R. It's a fucking condition-based game. <laughs> Put it away. Put it yeah. away. We have to do our own. Ah. <laughs> we'll steal off the air. <laughs> Uh, no, let's, let, let, let us put broken, actually. I think, like, All right. broken is a good... Um, um, okay, so a broken target. Um, what what happens with them? Um, well, let's do a couple things. Uh, I think intoxicated or poison, we should uh, move to loses a wound node each uh loses a node each uh round oh yeah that makes sense um and okay. then with broken we can limit movement uh can can only move uh um, two hexes every round until the uh uh so if we're gonna do that I think we actually need to separate intoxicated from poisoned because okay. I don't think if I'm drunk that I, that I have like a time limit on my life unless I'm crazy, drunk. crazy fucking drunk. Right. Um, well, I mean, maybe, maybe that is the case though. Right. Like maybe like, here's the thing. Like, do we need to narrate the condition? Because we're talking about combat conditions, right? Like, do we need to narrate the conditions of, like, you just regularly being drunk? Um, I could definitely see GM... Like, I know that, like, when people play games where characters do get drunk, it's often done as, like, a fun kind of joke thing. Yeah. Um, I don't... I don't know. I just don't feel like risking losing a player, like, dying because they decided to, like, do a gag and get drunk. Like... 
Granted, it's on them whether they want to apply the condition actually or not, but I think maybe a more fun, less lethal then, thing. Then let's, let's remove intoxicated as a condition at all. And okay. then during, uh, when we uh, make our actual items and shit, we can put drugs and shit in that have like effects. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so poison target. Cool. All right. Um, all right. So that way, a uh, broken, uh, broken target can only move two hexes, uh, per round. Okay. Uh, of their own volition. If someone were to carry you, we'll have to put in of your own volition. God, you it looks nice down there now, man. What does? Your, your house down there. It just like the plant and shit. Oh yeah, no, I've got I've got the whole I've got the whole nine yards, man. Got like a piano and yeah. Matthew Perry. <laughs> I I decided I I made this house I made this room look nice as soon as I got the chance. It's not filled with boxes anymore. Um, okay, sorry. So, um, broken target can only move two hexes. Two hexes of their own. Um, on uh, what, what or just on for? their own. Yeah, on their own. Because, um, like, somebody could carry you. Yeah, okay, I'm not even going to put that in. That's That goes without two saying. Hexes on, uh, per, two hexes per round on their own. Uh, okay, gotcha. Um, and this is individual. And now, yeah. do we need anything more? We have bleeding, blinded, broken, uh, deafened. Uh, um, so I'm curious, uh, stunned. We could also put condition, uh, we should have area conditions too, right? Like, uh, yeah. difficult, like terrain that's difficult to move over. Yeah. Okay. Um, so put that in after deaf, difficult terrain. Um, uh, maybe obscured terrain, like. Uh, hard to see. Sure, yeah. Okay. Um. Held could be a, a condition of terrain, right? Uh, could be, yeah. So put the terrain tag on there. Yeah. Um, what about, I mean, poisoned could be, right? Like, like poisonous gas or something? Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, if we're going to use terrain as a tag, I don't want to use difficult terrain as the name. What should we yeah. put there instead? What should the name be? Like, just Rocky? Ar arduous. <laughs> arduous. Uh, just cuts your movement in half. Yeah. Oh, hang on one sec. If that's the case, that needs to be way up here. Vertical, um... I have to climb it, maybe. Actually, I think arduous, like vertical, would be arduous, right? Like, yeah, so now, that would definitely be. Now climbing is solved too, because it, it, like, in combat you can climb something. It's just going to take like um, half, like half the move. You know, like you have to spend yeah. double movement. Um, oh, I like that. Uh, with the arduous condition, requires double movement nodes to achieve the same distance oh. moved. Uh, okay. uh, uh, obscured terrain. Terrain group. Ooh. So like, yeah. this could be a positive, right? Like, obscured could be a group thing or an individual thing. You are yes, obscured. absolutely. Terrain is, uh, let's not just think negative on conditions, right? Let's get some posies in there. Um, is the obscured terrain just leading can can incur the surprise condition? Because then now we're in an issue. Oh, that's a good question. May, may, you know what? We could also 
remove terrain and just we could have like a separate section in the GM section for terrain and put it in the cat's sheet, right? I mean, we could, yeah. I mean, the didn't we say though that the whole point of this is that we're making a com a comprehensive list that we are then going to just apply with tags. I mean, that's that's the whole reason. We don't want to we yeah. don't want to do that and then just decide, okay, well, we're going to split these up into other places. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, so, okay. Obscured terrain. Is there a condition or is there an issue there with surprised? Um, it definitely seems like in obscured terrain, it would be easier to surprise people. Right. Um, yeah. Um, it would be easier to prepare. This is my issue is like a lot of these like terrain tags could cause conditions, right? Cause conditions, maybe. Um, I think that we need to be careful when we talk about that because it's either cause conditions or it's lend themselves to conditions, right? We've talked before about spirals and how they're not inherently a bad thing. Um, so I don't, okay. for example, for example, I don't think that stepping into obscured terrain causes the surprised condition. I do think it makes it easier to inflict the, uh, uh, the surprised condition. Um, straight up terrain group individual. If you're in obscured terrain, you're hidden. If you're in group, uh, if your group is obscured, you're hidden. If an individual is obscured, you're hidden. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually just gonna, but, but then that says, that says to me, um, hidden. <laughs> uh, actions taken in this terrain or in this condition uh yeah uh, um, in this condition i want to say just something like easier or maybe uh, just can't, can't uh, be can't be respond like uh they can't be defended against right like well i can I mean, I can defend myself in obscured territory. If I go into a dark room and somebody's like attacking me, like I can still swing wildly. I may not have a great idea of what I'm doing, but I can still sure. defend myself. Sure. But we're, I mean, like we're not making a simulationist game, right? Like, so like in, in, in this, in this idea, like if you're in obscured territory, like, well, and see, this is where it gets tough though. Cause like, if I'm obscured, it's other people can't can't defend, right? Well, so maybe maybe that's it. So obscured targets are hidden. Um, any creature or character um, wanting to find them removes one die from their die pool. Something like that. I, I just think it. I, like I, I, I would love if it if it was more like um when obscured well and if it's terrain actually actually this tracks if it's terrain and you're fighting somebody and they are also in obscured terrain then you both can't defend against each other so you're still making wild attacks against each other yeah but you can't defend um it, it's it's like pluses and minuses, right? If I'm jumping out at someone, I can lend myself to the surprise condition because I was hidden. Um, Ooh, what about this? What about if I'm fighting wildly and not smart? I'm in the ferocity approach. What if any, what if attacks in obscured uh, terrain uh, require the ferocity approach? And that's another way we trap them into this, like sinkhole of well here's the thing though like if i'm using an obscured area to sneak around right yeah then why would i be in the ferocity approach i, I would be in obfuscation oh yeah may, 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 here's the thing let's remove terrain right now and let's um let's keep it separate and if we need to, we can put it back in uh, under these conditions. But right now it's posing a lot of issues. I don't think it's so, posing a lot of issues. We're literally having issues with a single with a single one. Like, 
the, I think we actually m made like a great addition with like arduous terrain. Like that actually, that tracks. I think we just, we're struggling with this one. Let's leave it where it is now and we'll come back to it. I'm gonna put a note on it, but okay. I don't think we need to remove it just yet. Uh, so needs to be fleshed out. Um, let's get some positive conditions in. Okay. Uh, fast. <laughs> fast. Uh, Character is full of rings. Turns blue. <laughs> exactly. Gotta yeah. Go fast. <laughs> um. Uh, in encourage could be an in like uh, rally. Rah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh. So rallied. <laughs> So that's going to be below rallied. So rallied targets. It sounds like they would just add. Are we talking about adding die to a pool? Are we talking about uh, maybe um, a, a, a larger polyhedral? Uh, dude, I was thinking the exact. I mean, those are the two options, right? Like, yeah, it, 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 would, it would be a smaller polyhedral technically. Oh, yeah. Smaller polyhedral. Um, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So I, I think because we haven't done a lot of polyhedral graduations, let's do yeah. that for this. Okay. So rallied targets graduate to the next. Oop. There we go. Next smallest polyhedral die type on their next roll. Well, let's just do uh, a rallied targets. Um, uh, uh, graduate the next to the next smallest polyhedral die type uh, for the next round uh, for the duration of the next round, or or, or for the until this condition is resolved. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so uh, on the on their current approach. So not on like every approach you do. It would be on your current approach. That way, uh, it's not so robustly strong. Okay, gotcha. So, okay, so in other words, um, so next current approach. So in other words, this may last for multiple rounds, but it, you'll still experience the degradation, but it'll be a larger die type. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Okay, so like sick. if you're using your smallest, then it gives you like an extra, you know, round on it, whatever. Okay. Um, cool. Um, yeah, uh, no, rally that works. group individual um, approach yeah, yeah. until the... Condition is removed. Um, I like the idea of shielded. Um, sure. Oh, just cover. Okay. Yeah, that works. Do you want to do cover or shielded? Uh, let's do cover. Um, so we can do group okay. individual or uh, that, that could be, well, where'd it go? Oh, right. Cause you're putting it in the right spot. Yeah. Uh, okay, so cover, so covered targets. Um, okay. Maybe reduce uh, damage by a single node. Uh, cover target. Uh, I mean, we probably don't want to do the cyberpunk thing for it because for some reason people dislike it. I actually think it's a pretty clever system you are either in cover or not in cover um yeah um so we could do um i mean it would bolster your defense right like that is the idea um so maybe it's just you get uh get a bonus to whatever you well no it doesn't necessarily track in well, I'm trying to get away from the simulation mindset, but I was going to say it doesn't necessarily track on, like, counterattacks and shit like that. Um, hmm. That's a toughie. I don't know. Uh, cover... Uh, maybe it just, yeah, reduces uh, reduces the nodes taken. Um, okay, yeah. Um, so reduce damage by a single wound node per attack while they have the covered condition. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Um, so let me see. There's rallied. There's covered. Um, bolstered. 
Or is that just rally? That's, that's just rallied. rallied. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, full, full, full tummy. <laughs> <laughs> What's the condition for just had some good soup and needs to lie down? Uh, <laughs> I'm a sweet baby. Uh, day, uh, days. Um, fli- slippery. Slippery is fun. <laughs> slippery. Slippery is a great condition, actually. Like, not even joking, that's actually pretty solid. I mean, it's 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 both... T- well, here's the thing. I mean, arduous terrain covers it, right? Um, yeah, it does. That's true. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I think we're good. Let's, 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 let's call that a day with conditions right now. Well, we can't call it a day yet. We, we don't have resolutions for any of these conditions. Okay, yeah. Um, let's... Uh, b- before we do any of that, let's uh, talk about... Uh, can all of these just increase by one or decrease by one um, for each level? Like, if we were looking at the best wounds? Uh, so, yeah, looking at the ones for wounds... Um... So suffer plus one additional damage nodes absolutely can be increased. Yes. Uh, blinded targets are unable to see must use adaptation. That can't really be doubled. Um, it's just uh, kind of, you're uh, in that approach, right? Uh, 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 oh, you know what we could do? Uh, reduce the uh, blinded, reduce the, um, Reduce your the polyhedral die of your current approach. Okay, yeah, that works. And then that way we can now you can increase it, right? Because you can uh, reduce it again, Re- reduce it again, and decrease. Ooh, they're used polyhedral die. That two. has some emergent gameplay that I love too, because that means Taylor that yeah. when you switch to a new. Uh, Unless you resolve blinded, your next approach that you switch to is also reduced. Like, it just reduces whatever approach you're on by one. Uh, uh, yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. I guess um, we'd have to put raise, actually. Man, we got to get in the habit of doing that. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, like, I don't want to... Raise sounds like it's a good thing. Um, right. Okay, then you're right. Let's keep it as reduced and we'll call it... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so broken target can only move two hexes. You can definitely decrease that down to one um, in the event that it's like a super bad thing. I might put it out there that the level one would be like reduced to three. Yeah, let's do that. Then. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm actually just going to put on here a level two broken wound. Well, so let's let's do this. Um, under wounds, let's just write... Um, the wound conditions, uh, wound conditions are by level. Uh, yeah. So uh, th- they increase or decrease by severity for each level that you add to them. That way we don't even have to write, um, like the whole idea is that we have that fucking. Right. The yeah. The issue the issue is if it was going from two down to one, that's a clear linear progression. But it, it, if we're starting at three, it could be going down to two or it could be going down to one. So unless you want to make specific move rules for broken, then we would have to, otherwise we'd have to put it in the actual broken terms. No, we just move everything by one step each time, right? Like, so wound condition one is three. Wound condition two is two. Wound condition one is one. We, like, it, it's actually already in the name. Wound, wound condition three is dead, as per our discussion before. Oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, then maybe we should have it as two hexes. 